guys welcome back to another lecture today's video will be talking about the larynx and before we study the larynx let's have a look at the arterial supply of the head and neck so in the arterial supply of the head and neck we have talked about in the one of the previous lecture that arch of aorta give rise to the brachiocephalic trunk the common carotid artery the left common carotid artery and the left subclavian artery we have also studied in that particular lecture that the brachiocephalic trunk right side the brachiocephalic trunk we have got only on the right side so it give rise to the common carotid artery and the right common carotid artery and the right subclavian artery while on the other hand left side we have got the left common carotid artery and the left subclavian artery directly arises from the arc of aorta and we have also covered in that particular video that superior thyroid artery is a branch of external carotid artery which is a branch of common carotid artery right and on the other hand we have also studied in that particular video lecture that the inferior thyroid artery is a branch of the subclavian artery so the inferior thyroid artery arises from the subclavian artery while the superior thyroid artery is the first branch of the external carotid artery we have also studied that vagus nerve is a nerve which accompanies this artery right so we have got the vagus nerve now the vagus nerve uh, why once we recall of our pharyngeal lecture series we have studied that fourth pharyngeal arch it it has got the supply of the superior laryngeal nerve while on the other hand if we recall the pharyngeal lectures then we have talked about that six pharyngeal arch give rise to the recurrent laryngeal nerve which is also a branch of the vagus nerve now the superior laryngeal nerve also give rises to two branches the internal laryngeal nerve as well as the external laryngeal nerve now remember the fact that internal laryngeal nerve accompanies the superior thyroid artery while on the other hand recurrent laryngeal nerve accompanies this inferior thyroid artery so this recurrent laryngeal nerve is going to supply it is going to give uh, supply or branches to the uh, the inferior thyroid artery i must say the inferior thyroid artery it gives the uh, supply to the recurrent laryngeal nerve as well as we have got the vocal cord so let's assume that this is the vocal cord so the superior part of the vocal cord is supplied by this internal laryngeal nerve while on the other hand the inferior part of the vocal cord is supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve so internal laryngeal nerve which is a branch of the superior laryngeal nerve right and which supplies the upper part of the vocal cord while on the other hand the recurrent laryngeal nerve which is a branch of uh, again the vagus nerve it supplies the in uh, the lower part of the vocal cord and what's the use of this external laryngeal nerve guys this external laryngeal nerve supplies to this cricothyroid muscle so all the muscles of the larynx are supplied by this recurrent laryngeal nerve which is accompanied by the inferior thyroid artery which supplies all of the muscles of larynx except the cricothyroid ct which is supplied by the external laryngeal nerve so let's hand draw this diagram again so guys if we hand draw this diagram we have the right side vagus nerve so this is the right side vagus nerve so let's say the right vagus and we have this left side vagus nerve left vagus and let's draw the vocal cord as well say this is the vocal cord the upper part as well as the lower part of the vocal cord so if we see from the fourth pharyngeal arch and if you recall from the pharyngeal arches video we have got the superior laryngeal nerve from the fourth pharyngeal arch 
so the superior laryngeal nerve from the fourth arch so let's draw it from the both the sides superior laryngeal nerve now the superior laryngeal nerve guys is giving rise to two branches on the both the ends so one is the internal laryngeal nerve this internal laryngeal nerve is going to supply on the upper surface of the vocal cord so basically the laryngeal mucosa on the vocal cord is supplied by the internal laryngeal nerve so let's say the upper part of the vocal cord as well as the laryngeal mucosa plus the laryngeal mucosa right now talking about the second part of the superior laryngeal nerve we have external laryngeal nerve now this external laryngeal nerve is only going to supply the cricothyroid muscle now talking about the derivative of the sixth pharyngeal arch and also guys remember that the cricothyroid is the muscle of the fourth pharyngeal arch so the cricothyroid is also the muscle of the fourth pharyngeal arch now let's talk about the sixth pharyngeal arch we have got the recurrent laryngeal nerve so this is the recurrent laryngeal nerve and also if you recall that the superior thyroid artery guys is again close to this the superior thyroid artery is again close to the internal laryngeal nerve so here we are going to draw the superior thyroid artery as well now what about derivative of the sixth pharyngeal arch so all the laryngeal muscles except the cricothyroid are supplied by this recurrent laryngeal nerve now the course of the left side of the recurrent laryngeal nerve is such that it is going to revolve around or cross the internal thyroid internal thyroid artery and if you recall the internal thyroid artery is a branch of the subclavian artery so this is the right side right internal thyroid artery which is a branch of the right subclavian artery and then it is going to supply the lower part of the vocal cord or we can say below the vocal cord or the lower surface of the vocal cord so recurrent laryngeal nerve supplies the lower surface of the vocal cord while on the other hand the internal laryngeal nerve which is a branch of the superior laryngeal nerve supplies the upper part of the or upper surface of the vocal cord so this is about the left side now if we talk about this was about the right side i'm sorry if we talk about the left side so left side is a bit different recurrent laryngeal nerve guys from the left side also arising from the vagus nerve but it is going to cross this thoracic inlet and it is going to pass below the arch of aorta in the arch of aorta we have the remnant of the ductus arteriosus which is the ligamentum arteriosum so let's draw this arch of aorta so it is going to pass beneath the arch of aorta and come back in into the neck come back into the neck and which is again close to the internal thyroid artery so this is the thoracic inlet say suppose here is the neck and below we have got the thorax so this left side recurrent laryngeal nerve it is going to pass below the arch of aorta and it is crossing the thoracic inlet twice right so in case of the thoracic inlet syndrome this left side of the recurrent laryngeal nerve is involved so this is the significance that we are talking about the right side and the left side so in case of a thoracic inlet syndrome
the left side of the recurrent laryngeal nerve is involved so guys up till now we have covered the external laryngeal nerve supplies the cricothyroid muscle which is a tensor of vocal cord so what happens since it is a tensor of the vocal cord guys it tenses the vocal cord that means in females having a high pitched voice very high pitch voice that is a very sharp voice so that is because of the cricothyroid because it is a tensor of the vocal cord so in the females this uh, they use this tensor muscle of the vocal cord which is the cricothyroid which is ct again it is supplied by the external laryngeal nerve except uh the, the cricothyroid all the muscles of the larynx are supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve and we have also studied that the external laryngeal nerve it follows the superior thyroid artery which is the first branch of the external carotid artery so in case if you are doing a thyroidectomy we have to prevent injury to this superior thyroid artery so the superior thyroid artery it should be ligated as well as the inferior thyroid artery also so the protocol has changed they should be ligated as close to the thyroid gland in case of a thyroidectomy procedure so also inferior thyroid artery which is a branch of the thyro cervical trunk which is accompanied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve so it supplies the thyroid gland it supplies the parathyroid gland it also supplies the recurrent laryngeal nerve that is the reason we are ligating this internal inferior thyroid artery as close to the thyroid gland as possible because we do not want to cut off the supply the vascular supply of the parathyroid gland as well as the recurrent laryngeal nerve because what happens if you are going to ligate this artery far away from the gland then the parathyroid and uh, gland as well as the recurrent laryngeal nerve will become necrosed so that is the reason we ligate both the arteries as close to the gland as possible according to the recent guidelines also up till now we have studied both the branches both the sides we have got two branches of the vagus nerve the superior laryngeal nerve which is going to give rise to two branches again internal laryngeal and the external laryngeal also the recurrent laryngeal nerve on the both side but if we see the recurrent laryngeal nerve on the left side is bit longer and it is going to hook under the ligamentum arteriosum which is basically we can say under the arch of aorta then it is coming back into the neck again so it is going to the thoracic thorax and it is coming back to the neck and supplies the larynx and the laryngeal mucosa below the vocal cord while on the other hand the right side is bit shorter it is it is it's it is going to hook uh, or revolve or uh, under around the internal thyroid artery or the inferior thyroid artery we can say so the vocal cord upper surface of the vocal cord is supplied by the internal laryngeal nerve and the lower surface of the vocal cord is supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve and it is very important that we understand this concept so that we can answer the question because lot of times this question has been asked so let's talk about the larynx or the voice box as we know that it is the organ which produces the voice so we can say phonation it helps in the phonation that is the voice production as well as it act as a sphincter for the lower respiratory passage so it act as a sphincter for the inlet of the air so the basically the larynx is it a it is a part of the respiratory system as well so it is allowing the gases two way flow of gases and expiration is the part wherein we exhale the air we breathe out the air so once when we are breathing out the air during the expiration process of the respiration is where the speech is produced so the speech is produced while the expiratory phase of the respiration once we are expirating once we are breathing out that is the time 
we produce the speech or the voice and if we abuse the vocal cords basically if i am overusing or if anyone is overusing the larynx then uh, because of the excessive talking can be excessive singing so it causes the singer's nodule or we can say the teacher's nodule sometimes it can even lead to cancer of the vocal cord as well so we should not overuse the vocal cord so that is the reason we call it the index on intellect index of intellectual is basically a, a man's language that means uh, we should speak less listen more right and guys here you can appreciate the larynx we will be talking about the muscles of larynx as well so you can see it lies in the anterior midline of the neck so this larynx is situated in the midline and it extend from the root of the tongue to the trachea so if you appreciate and if you count the vertebrae we have got the larynx between the c3 to c6 in adults but in case of children or in case of females it is bit at a higher level close to the c3 and it can be above the c3 as well so it is 44 mm in length and 36 mm uh in the females in the males it is 44 mm so what happens why uh, it is longer in the male because at the time of puberty this larynx grows rapidly as compared to the females i mean when the pubertal growth spurts erupts uh, it becomes it becomes longer in case of males while on the other hand the growth is not much in case of females so this larynx is basically made of the skeletal framework basically the cartilages and we will be talking about the cartilages as well so cartilages are connected by the joints ligaments and the membranes and this larynx is basically moved by the muscles and the cavity is lined by the mucous membrane and if you can appreciate over here this is what we have talked till now that the recurrent laryngeal nerve guys you can see it is going to loop around as you can appreciate it is going to make a loop on the so this is the recurrent laryngeal nerve as you can appreciate the left side of the recurrent laryngeal nerve it is going into the thorax while on the other hand the right side one is bit shorter so as you can appreciate it is bit shorter this is what we have talked about so if you see this larynx you can see the hyoid cartilage the one in the yellow and also you can see one in the green is the cricoid cartilage so we have got the hyoid bone up here so guys that's our hyoid bone so this is the hyoid bone and you can also appreciate the thyroid cartilage over here this is the thyroid cartilage and you can also see the cricoid cartilage see this is from the anterior view the cricoid cartilage now if you see this cricoid cartilage it is a signet ring shape so if you see from the posterior aspect the thyroid cartilage is open posteriorly right so there is only anterior and lateral boundary while on the other hand if you see this cricoid cartilage it is a ring shaped see this is a ring shaped and we have got in the posterior view you can also see the arytenoid cartilages one in the blue you can also see the corniculate cartilage guys this one the corniculate cartilage and also up superiorly you can see the cuneiform cartilages so the leaf shape are the cuneiform cartilages now you can see we have got three paired and three unpaired if you can appreciate the cuneiform cartilage one on the top posteriorly is two small rod shaped pieces of the cartilage basically placed in the aryepiglottic fold right and below that we have got two small conical nodules which are situated on the top of the or top of on the top of this arytenoid cartilage so these are the corniculate cartilage guys these are the corniculate cartilages and you can also appreciate the two blue color small pyramid shape cartilages which are lying on the 
upper border of the cricoid cartilage so these are the arytenoid cartilages so this is the posterior aspect of a cricoid cartilage so if you can appreciate we have got the upper the out i mean the anterior part of this cricoid cartilage and if you can appreciate this anterior part of the cricoid cartilage is narrower than the posterior part so anterior part which is narrower we call it the arch and the posterior part if you can appreciate it is bit broader so it is broad so this part is known as the lamina of the cricoid cartilage also guys you can appreciate this red color leaf like cartilage so this red leaf like cartilage is the epiglottis so which is present in the anterior wall of the upper part of the larynx so you can see this from the upper aspect also you can see this epiglottic cartilage or we can say the epiglottis you can also see this v shape cross section thyroid cartilage guys which is basically a quadrilateral shape so we have studied three unpaired cartilages which are the single cartilage unpaired means they are present only one so the thyroid cartilage the cricoid cartilage as well as the epiglottic cartilage they are the unpaired cartilages we have also seen the paired cartilage on the posterior aspect of the larynx so these are the arytenoid cartilage the pyramid shape blue color also you can see on the top of the arytenoid cartilage on the apex of the arytenoid cartilage we have got these corniculate cartilage basically the conical nodules like cartilages and on the top of this corniculate cartilage you can appreciate the cuneiform so small rod like cuneiform cartilages and you can also appreciate the vocal cord guys from here so this is the larynx as you can see if we see from the inferior part what we see is the arytenoid cartilage the blue color arytenoid cartilages as well as the conus elasticus so this is the conus elasticus and here you can also see the cricoid cartilage as well as the thyroid cartilage so this structure we are going to hand draw or see in a well labeled diagram so from the posterior aspect of the larynx see this is the posterior aspect of the larynx and which consists of you can see easily see this leaf shape epiglottic cartilage you can also see the pyramid shape blue color one the arytenoid cartilage on the top of arytenoid cartilage you can see the corniculate cartilage on the top of corniculate cartilage you can also see the cuneiform cartilage and also see the thyroid cartilage which is opened posteriorly the cricoid cartilage on the other hand is ring shape so we can also see the thyroid cartilage above to that we have thy hyoid bone right and in between you have the thyroid thyrohyoid ligament right so guys now that we have seen in a animated three dimensional structure we can appreciate all the cartilages this is the epiglottis hyoid bone then we have got the thyroid cartilage and then below that we have got the cricoid cartilage the anterior part on the posterior hand you can see this epiglottic cartilage you can also see the cricoid cartilage on the top of cricoid cartilage we have the arytenoid cartilage pyramid shape on the top of the arytenoid cartilage we have corniculate on the top of corniculate we have cuneiform so this is how the cartilages are arranged and if you see the cartilages so the cartilages we have nine cartilages three are paired and three are unpaired paired means we have got cartilages on the both sides so that are a c c that is arytenoid on the top of arytenoid we have corniculate on the top of corniculate we have cuneiform 
if you see the unpaired cartilages we have epiglottic cartilage we have epiglottic we can also write or epiglottis cartilage also you can say we have the thyroid cartilage as well as the cricoid cartilage which is a signet ring shape so they, these are the cartilages and you can now appreciate in a, a diagram as well so guys now that you can appreciate that this is a thyroid cartilage from the side view and you can also appreciate the cricoid cartilage so the muscle arising from the cricoid cartilage originating uh, i mean the originating from the cricoid cartilage inserting into the thyroid cartilage will be known as cricothyroid muscle so we can also say it cricothyroid muscle originating from the cricoid uh, cricoid cartilage inserting into the thyroid cartilage is our cricothyroid muscle and we know that cricothyroid muscle is the muscle which is supplied by the external laryngeal nerve all the muscles of the larynx are supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve except the cricothyroid which is supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve also we have studied that cricothyroid is basically a tensor it is a tensor of the vocal cord so that means in case of high pitched voice in females this cricothyroid muscle is the one which is responsible and the singers female singers train this mu muscle for to uh, have a high pitched voice so this is the cricothyroid now let's talk about rest all the muscles you can see as the name suggests see initial part is the origin Uh, and end part is the insertion so all the muscles are going to be fixed at origin and they'll be pulling from the insertion so cricoarytenoid that means arising from the cricoid cartilage inserting into the arytenoid cartilage so arising from the cricoid inserting into the arytenoid cartilage so they are going to ct c p cap so that is posterior cricoarytenoid muscle so posterior cricoarytenoid muscle is going to be only abductor since it looks like abs muscle so you can remember it that it is the only abductor abduction it is going to make the abduction of the vocal cord that means it is going to open the vocal cord that means it is going to help for the airway passage so what happens in case if there is a posterior cricoarytenoid muscle damage then there is going to be hoarseness of the voice first of all secondly if bilateral posterior cricoarytenoid muscle is damaged or it is paralyzed then the patient won't be able to breathe so in that case we have to make the endotracheal intubation we have to do the endotracheal intubation so that the patient can breathe so in case of anesthesia wherein we are going to paralyze all the muscles then we are going to put the endo uh, put the patient on endotracheal intubation so in that case the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle will also be paralyzed or we can say see guys all the muscles of the larynx are mostly are going to be the adductor of the lay of the larynx or adductor of the vocal cord the, the posterior cricoarytenoid p cap you can also remember the pre cam posterior crico arytenoid muscle the pcam is the only muscle which is going to be the abductor since it looks like a abs muscle you can remember that it is the only abductor which is going to open the vocal cord so that is why it is also known as the safety muscle since it is the only abductor of the vocal cord rest all the muscles are going to be the adductor of the vocal cord so basically arytenoid is the mainly which is the adductor of the vocal cord but all, always remember that abduction is due to the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle since it looks like abs so it is going to do the abduction of the vocal cord so in case if there is a bilateral paralysis of this posterior cricoarytenoid then this vocal cord will be like 
in a cadaveric position like how uh, a dead person's vocal cords are like right and the patient won't be able to breathe properly so either we have to do the tracheostomy or we have to make the endotracheal intubation in case if we are doing the tracheostomy then also in uh, within a one day we have to make this uh, do the endotracheal intubation so basically the endotracheal intubation is the only choice in case if there is a bilateral both the sides paralysis of this posterior cricoarytenoid muscle so always remember that PCAM is the muscle posterior cricoarytenoid which is responsible for opening of the vocal cord we can say the abduction so abs abd abduction of the vocal cord is the posterior cricoarytenoid adduction a double d will be due to the lateral cricoarytenoid uh, muscle also we can say the oblique arytenoid muscle so you can oh, oh, see over here we have the oblique arytenoid muscle so uh, adduction a double d is due to this or uh, oblique arytenoid or the transverse uh, arytenoid we can say as well as the lateral arytenoid muscles so all these muscles will do the adduction abduction abs is uh, due to the posterior cricoarytenoid and always remember that the ct which is the cricothyroid muscle again this is the only muscle which is outside the larynx this is the only muscle which is supplied by the external laryngeal nerve except that all the muscles are supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve and the ct again is the tensor of the uh, uh, we can say the larynx or tensor of the vocal cord so ct is the tensor of the vocal cord it is responsible for the high pitch voice posterior cricoarytenoid pcam is responsible for abduction of the vocal cord which is going to open the vocal cord or open the uh, open the airway so this ct is a cricothyroid tensor of the vocal cord high pitch voice while the low pitch voice or the we can say heavy voice is due to the relaxer of the vocal cord and the relaxer of the vocal cord is guys from the thyroid cartilage to the arytenoid which is the thyroarytenoid so here is going to be the thyroarytenoid so thyroarytenoid muscle is the relaxer of the vocal cord and as the name suggests it is coming for originating from the thyroid cartilage and inserting into the anterior to arytenoid muscle posteriorly basically and inner part of this thyroarytenoid see inner part of this thyroarytenoid is the vocalis vocalis and if you see the posterior part of this vocalis is the relaxer which is close to the thyroarytenoid this is basically the relaxer the posterior part of the vocalis while on the other hand the anterior part of the vocalis is the tensor of the vocal cord so there are two muscles of the tensor of vocal cord one is the cricothyroid muscle which we have studied and also the anterior part of the vocalis is also a tensor of the vocal cord so let me write the tensor of the vocal cord we have the cricothyroid and the anterior part of the vocalis and vocalis is the innermost part of this thyroarytenoid muscle and the relaxer of the vocal cord is our thyroarytenoid as well as we can say the posterior part of the vocalis now you can see the vocal cord so guys abduction is due to the pcam the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle the adduction is due to rest all the muscles cricoarytenoid lateral cricoarytenoid transverse cricoarytenoid oblique arytenoids so all the muscles are going to adduct the a double d adduct the vocal cord that is close the vocal cord since this posterior cricoarytenoid muscle is responsible for opening the vocal cords that is abductor abd of the vocal cord so that is the reason it is also known as the safety muscle because it is going to let us breathe let the air in and out of the vocal cords so guys this is the posterior 
pecam muscle the posterior arytenoid muscle cricoarytenoid muscle as you can see originating from the cricoid inserting into the arytenoid so this is the pecam muscle and if you see the action of this pecam muscle how it is going to open the vocal cord or abd abduct the vocal cord see the action of this muscle is when this muscle is acting it is going to open the vocal cord open the see it is going to ab abd abduct the vocal cord as you can appreciate that once this muscle is acting it is going to open the vocal cords and letting the air in so in case if there is a paralysis the patient won't be able to breathe since the vocal cords are closed so this is the action of pecam which is the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle which is the only abductor of the vocal cord now guys see the lateral cricoarytenoid muscle see this is present on the lateral aspect as you can see it is present laterally from the cricoid cartilage inserting into the uh, uh, posteriorly to the arytenoid cartilage as you can see the lateral aspect of the arytenoid so that is why the lateral arytenoid so if you can see it is laterally and it is a double d adductor of the vocal cord so it is going to close the vocal cords so if you see the action of this lateral cricoarytenoid it is going to close the vocal cords so a double d adduction of the vocal cord so if you can see once it is acting it is closing the vocal cords the fading away guys is when the muscle is not acting when the muscle is not acting it's open if you can see when it is highlighted the muscle becomes red it is activated so once the muscle is contracting it is going to close the vocal cords likewise we have two more adductors the transverse arytenoid guys the transverse arytenoid muscle see it is also the adductor of the vocal cord a double d since it is present transversely in, in the arytenoid muscle arytenoid cartilage and once it is acting it is going to close the vocal cord guys see it is closing the vocal cord as you can see the cricoid cartilage on the top of that we can see the arytenoid cartilage and if if you appreciate it is going to close the vocal cords right so let's see it is closing the vocal cord guys so it is also the adductor of the vocal cord so we have studied lateral cricoarytenoid which is also closing the vocal cord which is also an adductor of the vocal cord as well as you can you have also seen the transverse arytenoid so transverse arytenoid is also see this is the transverse arytenoid it is also adductor of the vocal cord it is closing so once this muscle is contracting it is closing the vocal cords as you can see once the muscle is contract it closes the vocal cords as well as the oblique arytenoids is also adductor of the vocal cord as you can see the oblique arytenoid muscle see guys this is the oblique arytenoid muscle so this is also adductor of the vocal cord and you can appreciate once this muscle contracts it is going to close the vocal cords see contracts it is closing the vocal cord so once this muscle is contracting it is closing the vocal cord so the uh, the lateral cricoarytenoid the transverse cricoarytenoid as well as the oblique arytenoid is also the adductor of the vocal cord and the abductor abd of vocal cord is the pecam muscle which is the posterior cricoarytenoid the only abductor of the vocal cord is posterior cricoarytenoid muscle we have also studied about the cricothyroid muscle so guys this is a cricothyroid muscle originating from the cricoid inserting into the thyroid cartilage and the only muscle outside the larynx and also we have studied that this is the only muscle which is supplied by the internal laryngeal nerve rest all the muscles of the larynx are supplied by the external laryngeal nerve except the cricothyroid which is supplied by the internal laryngeal nerve see this is the cricothyroid muscle it has got two parts this is the 
straight part and this is the oblique part of the cricothyroid so the straight fibers as well as the oblique fibers of this cricothyroid muscle see this is the cricothyroid muscle and we have also studied that cricothyroid muscle is the one which is responsible for high pitch voice in the females so it is the tensor of the vocal cord let's see how see guys once this muscle is acting it is going to tense the vocal cord if you see it is tensing the vocal cord and there wo thereby see the the vocal cords become narrower that is how the high pitch voice becomes i mean the tensor it is the tensor of the vocal cord so cricothyroid it is going to tense the vocal cords it is tensing the vocal cords as you can see this muscle relaxed now and it is contracted now so relaxed once it is contracted it is tensing the vocal cord and therefore the once the space is narrow so the voice becomes high high pitched right so this is the cricothyroid again the tensor of the only tensor of the vocal cord the only muscle outside the larynx as well as we have studied that only muscle supplying the uh, supplied by the internal laryngeal nerve except all supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve so the tensor of the vocal cord is cricothyroid the relaxer of the vocal cord if you can see guys is our thyroarytenoid so if you can appreciate we have i have faded the thyroid cartilage and if you can see originating from the thyroid inserting into the arytenoid so this is the thyroarytenoid muscle right this is the thyroarytenoid muscle and it is going to relax the vocal cord so guys only relaxer of the vocal cord see it is going to relax the vocal cords is the thyroarytenoid so if you can see thyroarytenoid the relaxer of the vocal cord so it is going to relax the vocal cords the tensor of the vocal cord is ct cricothyroid the relaxer of the vocal cord is the thyroarytenoid now that we have seen in the animated diagram we can appreciate that what's the vocal cords are closed that means they are adducted a double d once the vocal cords are open that means they are abducted so elevate elevation of the larynx see all the muscles always remember in the anatomy the first half of the muscle is the origin the next half is the insertion of the muscle and always origin pulls the insertion that means the thyroid muscle it is going to pull the hyoid bone so it is going to pull the larynx right so it is going to elevate the larynx up in the neck myelohyoid again from the myeloid again to the hyoid bone so it is going to pull the hyoid bone so these are the elevators of the hyoid right so suprahyoid muscle i can say it is going to elevate the larynx again depression will be the infrahyoid the muscles which are going to pull the hyoid bone downwards toward the thorax so that they are the depression of the larynx the st sternothyroid and the sternohyoid the opening inlet of the larynx is due to the thyroepiglotticus the closing inlet of the larynx is due to the eriepiglotticus the only abductor which is like abs is the opecan which is the posterior cricoarytenoid then the abductor are the only abductor of the vocal cord is the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle the ab adductor a double d r the lateral cricoarytenoid oblique arytenoids the transverse arytenoids and the only tensor of the vocal cord we have studied is the ct cricothyroid which is the only muscle outside the larynx we have also studied the only muscle supplied by the external laryngeal nerve the only muscle supplied by the external laryngeal nerve rest all the muscles of the larynx are supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve so only muscle by the supplied by the external laryngeal nerve rest all are supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve the relaxer of the vocal cord is thyroarytenoid so safety muscle is again the 
safety muscle guys is the pecam muscle which is the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle because it is going to abd abduct the vocal cord the most anterior cartilage is the thyroid cartilage the signet ring shape cartilage is the cricoid a double d adductor or the arytenoids muscle and in case of there is a bilateral paralysis of the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle then we have to do the endotracheal intubation so all the muscles of the larynx are supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve except the cricothyroid which is by the external laryngeal nerve now you can appreciate the vocal cord is closed that means this is a diagram showing the a double d adduction of the vocal cord right so adduction of the vocal cord again we have studied by the muscles like the lateral cricoarytenoid muscle the oblique arytenoids and the transverse arytenoids responsible for the a double d adduction of the vocal cord and if you see the vocal cords are uh, closed so that is the adduction and if you can compare this picture over here so this is a diagram showing a double d adduction that means the vocal cords are closed over here on the right side we can see the a b d which is abs adduct abduction of the vocal cord which is because of the pecam which is the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle so as you can see once this posterior cricoarytenoid muscle are acting they are going to pull apart the vocal cords that is going to open the vocal cord so that is the abd abduction of the vocal cord and also we know that the air once we breathe out once we expire the air the when the air is forced out of the lung this is when the voice is produced so the loudness or the intensity of the voice depend on the force of expiration of the air that means the pitch of the voice again depend on the rate of the vibration of the vocal cords that means if we are expiring or uh, the force of expiration is more the voice is going to be louder so more the force of expiration more is the intensity of the voice so the loudness or the intensity of the voice depend on the force of the air we expire or we expirate again the expired once we are going to breathe out this is where the voice is produced and basically we know the vocal cords are going to vibrate all the times so once we are expiring the air once we are breathing out the vibration of the vocal cord happens once the vibra vocal cord are vibrating this is when the pitch of the voice occurs and we know that pitch of the voice is due to the tensor of the vocal cord which is the ct so pitch of the voice depend on the rate of vibration of the vocal cords and guys vowel sounds are produced in the larynx while on the other hand the consonant sounds so vowels are a e i o u consonants are rest all so they are produced the consonants basically uh, so many types like labiolingual sound all that we have covered in the prost also labiolingual labiodental bilabial sound b p like all these sounds are produced by the lips we can say so vowels are the one which are produced by the larynx and re resonant sounds are via the nose see uh, there is resonant in the voice when you have some sinus infection or some uh, nasal infection we can say right so the quality of the sound of the resonants depend on the um, column of the air between the vocal cords and the nose and the lips and if you see the rima glottis we have got two components one is the intermembranous part another one is the intercartilaginous part so if you see the intermembranous part normally during a quiet breathing or in case of rest we can say this intermembranous part is triangular and intercartilaginous part you can see is quadrangular 
basically it, it is more like a rectangular shape we can say four sided quadrangular so the intermembranous part is one which is triangular normally at the resting and the intercartilaginous part between the cartilage see guys this is the arytenoid cartilage one blue color one pyramid shape right basically this diagram is a hand drawn of this particular diagram so here we have the arytenoids and this is the cricoid cartilage and here we have the thyroid cartilage so the same diagram we are going to copy so this is the here again this is the thyroid cartilage then we have got the cricoid cartilage which is somewhere here and the arytenoid cartilage one in the blue and you can see these vocal ligaments so the one which is bounded by this arytenoid cartilage is the cartilaginous part which is more like a rectangular we can say the quadrangular shape so normally in the normal breathing we can say quiet breathing or at resting the intermembranous part of the rima is triangular the intercartilaginous part is quadrangular in shape now in case of speech or phonation once we are speaking the glottis is reduced i mean if you see it has become so narrow so the opening becomes quite narrow which is thin when the opening become narrow or thin we call it the chink so it forms a very narrow it is basically a narrow opening in case of speech or phonation which we call it chink so in case of quiet breathing or resting the intermembranous part is triangular the intercartilaginous part is quadrangular in case of phonation or speech the glottis is reduced to a chink by the adduction and if you can see adduction is basically closing so it is a double d which is due to the muscles like lateral cricoarytenoid transverse arytenoid or oblique arytenoid and during whispering we see the intermembranous part of the rima is closed so this part is closed and the intercartilaginous part becomes wider so intermembranous part becomes closed but the intercartilaginous part become wide open so which is due to the lateral cricoarytenoid we know that lateral cricoarytenoid is going to pull the apart then you can also see during the forced inspiration guys this was during whispering so it becomes inverted funnel shape inverted funnel appearance and during forced inspiration if you are breathing very forcefully you will observe that both the parts of the rima are triangular so that the entire rima become the lozenge shape so basically the vocal cords are fully opened we can say the vocal cords are abd abducted so fully opened so which is because of the abduction is due to we have know that pcam which is the posterior cricoarytenoid only muscle responsible for the abduction so it becomes a diamond shape in appearance and guys if they can if they ask you clinical questions like if there is any damage to the external laryngeal nerve per se then the we know that external laryngeal nerve uh, supplies the cricothyroid muscle so it is going to cause some weakness in the phonation which is due to the loss of this uh, cricothyroid muscle we know that cricothyroid muscle is responsible for the tensor that means high pitch voice then the voice the pitch of the voice of that person becomes very weak so the phonation becomes weak due to loss of the tightening of this cricothyroid muscle also if they can if they ask you when both the recurrent laryngeal nerves are interrupted like uh, 
uh, we have all, all already studied that if both the laryngeal nerves then the first muscle which is going to affect is the ABD abductor which is the PCAM muscle the posterior cricoarytenoid see in case of progressive lesion if they are asking in case of progressive lesion of the recurrent laryngeal nerve then only ab ABD abductor of the vocal cord which is the PCAM the posterior cricoarytenoid is the one which is paralyzed first and it is the one which is recovered last so this particular phenomena is known as the Siemens Semen law so let's write somewhere so guys according to Semen's law it says that in case of progressive lesion of the cre of the recurrent laryngeal nerve we know that all the muscles are supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve except one which is the CT which is supplied by the external laryngeal nerve. So in case of progressive lesion to the recurrent laryngeal nerve only ABD abductor is the one which is affected first. So the first paralyzed muscle is the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle. And this is the muscle which is also last one to recover once we compare with the adductors of the larynx so that is the Semen's law if we are talking see this is when we are talking about progressive lesion of the recurrent laryngeal nerve if we are saying the functional paralysis of the larynx then a double d adductor are paralyzed so guys this is about the larynx i hope that you have understood the cartilages of the larynx since the larynx is very difficult to understand. I've tried to make it easier for you via animations so that you can understand it better. So if you have enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Also comment in the comment section below. You can check out our website for the notes of this particular video lecture or more interesting notes www.xtooth.com So guys, till then keep reading, keep learning, stay motivated. I'll see you soon in the next lecture.